بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام امين وعليكم السلام مايند هايستز ورحمه الله وبركاته You know you gotta reply with the same or better, bro. See, right away we're dropping knowledge. <laughs> you know, it's, in, it's I love this stuff, bro. Like when you hear, for example, somebody might say, "Oh, you gotta you gotta reply with better or the same or better." Yeah, then yeah. you might then you read the ayah in the Quran which says that exactly. So it's quite Spana. sick. Or like was it um, in the, our last episode, uh, you mentioned about Yom al Qiyamah being fifty thousand years. Uh, I, uh, yes, <laughs> I think he did, <laughs> and that's also in an A in the Quran, I believe. So, oh, it's, there we go. It's quite sick. Yeah, I wasn't and sure. I wasn't hundred percent sure about the time, so I was mm. a bit like umming and erring. Yeah, I think yeah, it was a long yeah. time, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What's the latest, man? Uh, obviously, living the two kids' life, basically. Busy, busy, bro. Busy, busy. Um. I think you you know you try and you try and you try and split the duties so one person looks after one while the other does the other and then mm. there's always these crossover periods where neither is looking after either yeah. um, and then you come back in the room and like one of them is like on top of the other one yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. my toddler he's trying to like he's not being harsh or anything he just wants to kiss mm. his baby brother and, and hug him and Mashallah, stuff but it's like he doesn't know Obviously, he doesn't know his strength, and he doesn't know how yeah. to be gentle yet. But but I bet you feel like the the new baby, you're much less careful with him. Just to, just to be real, I'm sure that will happen, right? I think <laughs> I am. I think even like when I'm changing him and stuff, I'm not as delicate as I was. Yeah. When I first. That's why it. the second one is always going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the second, by the way. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. No, no, yeah. That, that, it's that, tough, that, man, that because happen. you got. You you worry about now, like I, I worry now about like giving equal attention and being just between mm. them, and like when I first had the second one, I was a bit worried about not being able to connect with him as I am connecting with my first one. Like when yeah. my f- first child was born, I was so emotional and it was all a new experience and stuff. Mm. And mm. the second one, it was also <clears throat> emotional, but I just I don't know if it hit that same level. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, it is what it is, bro. You can imagine, like, imagine you had, like, eight kids, yeah? Yeah. Like, none of those kids are going to feel like, oh, I'm the special one. I'm entitled. I'm this. It's like, no, there's eight of you, you know? Yeah. Um, So you can imagine how having one kid or two, like, it makes a difference, you know, compared to having, like, six, seven, eight, nine, you know? Yeah. I think one thing I've sort of realized today is that there's no rest in terms of, you, you you don't really get much break in terms yeah. of like me time or you know mm-hmm. um so what i'm trying to do is really focus on the benefits of time with them so mm-hmm. like you know for example after a hard day at work you kind of just want to not work anymore <laughs> you know but yeah. you have to try and start seeing your kids as not work but as something to enjoy so you try and have fun with them and make that your end goal yeah. for the day something to look forward to and with a lot of you know stuff i'm going through a lot of stuff that everyone goes through um, i've realized the importance of trying to put things in your life to look forward to mm-hmm. um so i think that was something i was struggling with a lot recently is that um i said it to my wife i was it's to be honest it's a very positive thing but it's incredible how positive things can become negatives very quickly uh, what i said to her is like i don't really know where my life's heading now because i've got everything i wanted and, I, and and it's I know it's it might sound like I'm being a bit um what's the word ungrateful but it's kind of you know for a long time um I wanted to get married and I wanted to have kids and I wanted to have yeah. my own place and do you know what I mean I, I wanted all yeah. these things yeah. more, more than anything else I never really had much material interest in the sense that I was working hard mm-hmm. for it the things I have now are the things mm-hmm. I was working hard for and and now mm-hmm. it just sort of dawned upon me that I've got nothing to immediately look forward to and that's mm. it's kind of making my life a little bit mundane and it's a bit weird to say what about that. the s class bro that what well, i can't i'm not, <laughs> 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 I'm not <kidding laughs> that, bro. <laughs> but you know what i'm trying to say like yeah, yeah. i couldn't think of anything that was like mm. that like uh, you said that's good and it's bad it's good and then i realized it's really important <laughs> to have things to look forward to i even like yeah, googled yeah. I even did a little Google search about that phrase, having things to look forward to. And it's actually quite a common 
thing that people yeah. suffer from not having. So, like, yeah. I want, you know, I think it's... But this is, is it why a lack of um, something positive in the future, or is it a lack of um, a kind of a goal? Um, so it could be a bit of both. Um, I think we... Uh, I spoke to... Uh, I was speaking to a counsellor today mm-hmm. for the first time. I took the mm. plunge. Yeah. Um, and I've got, like, an appointment coming up soon. But I spent, like, an hour on the phone with them, and it, he was just... It's quite interesting speaking to someone who's quite a professional in the sort of things. Like you're, like I'm there talking about things, mm-hmm. and then he's putting like terms and names on them. Like he okay. already knows what I'm talking about. Do you oh. understand? Which was quite refreshing because yeah. you're trying to put something into words, yeah, and, and then he'll just come back with what the word is, like what it's like it pattern is. recognition. Yeah. yeah, and it's um, one thing that was interesting was like I would say things that are point blank, like straight you know straight muslim things like straight like i'd mm. say oh my belief system is xyz like w- without pulling any punches for example um not that i'm suicidal but i mentioned i brought up suicide and i said um well you know you know i i have the strongest belief that if i was to commit suicide then then uh i would be punished for it etc like in the afterlife do you yeah. understand like that's quite a it's quite a hardcore thing to hear if you're not religious true um and he didn't bat an eyelid Mm. He was just like, right, yep, okay, I understand. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But like, yeah. I didn't feel like it was um, sort of like, oh, that's a bit extreme. Like, he just fully believed it. Yeah, not judgmental. Yeah, not judgmental. And I think that was quite cool because mm. I think that's one of our biggest fears in this society, at least, speaking to non-Muslims about mm. issues. And it is a bit of an annoying one because you have this, you have this uh, for yourself a little bit that you don't want to rely on anyone, especially people that aren't necessarily going to understand your belief system where you come from and stuff like that yeah um but at the same time we all live in this dunya we're all exposed to certain things and i I haven't got enough experience to promote this sort of counseling or whatever Mm -hmm. but i did feel better after Mm. speaking to them and i'm hoping Mm. that maybe you know in the future it, it sort of pays off Mm. Um, I can't remember what my ultimate goal was about what I was trying to mm. convey to you, but it was you know, on the topic of like not having something to look forward to, that's what you're talking about. Oh yeah, 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 that's it. Um, I I was shared this uh, this podcast um, recently, and I really enjoyed a specific episode. Um, it's in Arabic. Okay, I don't know if you uh, would listen to an Arabic podcast, but it, the the podcast is just called Ahmed al Sayyid with a shed on the on the yeah right. Okay. And uh, I think, yeah, he's Saudi, yeah. But he doesn't live in Saudi. I don't know. He's uh, definitely uh, a different character. He's, uh, yeah, and he done all his Islamic studies, but then he's gone way beyond that. You could call him, I don't know, yeah, and he, there's going to be certain uh, things, people. Uh, what's like a neutral word for stigma? Because stigma is negative. Um, associations. People okay. are going to have certain associations. But I feel like he's a little bit, old a little bit more mature arab version of muhammad hijab okay, okay. <laughs> yeah and okay. obviously he's uh yeah, and he's done his studies to a further level yeah, but yeah. um he's sick anyway so he's got an episode called um so if you just search, search ahmed the sayyid then you'll find his podcast and this is um episode three and it's called uh, mashru al-umar so it's about having like a a kind of a life project like a project you work on you know, throughout your life yeah and it's like it it's like your life's work, you know, basically. Yeah. And um, he, he talks for like the, the whole episode about that, how to find what this should be, um, how to decide, you know, what is a good life project, what's not good. And it's just something that, you know, you you work towards. It's not a specific thing, like, for example, I don't know, writing a book or making a film. Mm. No, that would be just one ingredient to your overall uh, life's work. You know, so your life's work might be in, um, da'wah or it might be in um, I don't know uh, medical research or whatever yeah. and it's the end goal of furthering that thing is made up of these little projects you know so um, yeah it's very good for, for like what you're talking about because I think ultimately every Muslim needs something like that um, like I was thinking the other day like okay I spend let's say I spend or the average person they spend 8 hours sleeping and 8 hours working and now you got 8 hours left and it's like, what are you doing with that time? You know, mm. okay, you're, you're eating, you're praying, you're spending time with your family, but there the should always be, you know, one to three hours of those eight hours need to go somewhere 
um, that is contributing to what you might call your life's work, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be something that people will uh, find out about and praise you for when you die. It could be memorizing the book of Allah. Um, it could be many things. But, you know, I feel like if you do have those eight hours, which, you know, maybe in the past, a lot of people didn't have that level of free time. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's important. It's a responsibility to use whatever you can of that time towards something like that, isn't it? Mm, mm. And maybe, you know, uh, now you said you've achieved certain, you know, a lot of these things that you wanted before. Maybe now this is the next phase where it's like you think of where you want to point your energy towards. Yeah, definitely. I, I would like to, like, e even something charitable or something, um, some sort of project. Um, yeah. It, I need something to to be excited about. Um, yeah, yeah. And to share, I want you know something to share with my family, share with my wife, yeah. so that we can be excited about it together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which, it, that, and this is the 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 key is that when you have when all your time is filled up with responsibilities, um, it becomes quite it can become quite monotonous and mundane, and every day is sort of the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. it's about injecting something different into that. Yes, um, exactly. Something fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something and fulfilling that's ultimately, thing. isn't it? You feel no, definitely. fulfillment. I mean, you, you ultimately, a lot of people don't find fulfillment in their work, right? And no, you no, don't find fulfillment in sleeping. So you, you got to find fulfillment somewhere. And hopefully that would be, you know, spending time with your family. And well, this is also, it, yeah. Also because a lot of in doing something extra. A lot of entertainment of and a lot of stuff that we do when we do have a second to ourselves, which is yeah. entertainment and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's just It's just not rewarding enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you could spend an hour watching something that might not even be that mm -hmm. great and then feel yeah. crappy about it afterwards because you've just been like, oh, I wasted my time doing that. Um, yeah. It's like, a, it's a, it's a, it's the reason why I've always been so, um, people that know me well will know me that I'm always quite keen on reading reviews um, mm -hmm. because if it's not like nine and above, then I'm not interested because why would yeah, I waste yeah. my time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Have you so found the reviews to be, you know, useful and accurate usually? Um sometimes on the other case it depends what it is but on the other occasion like, there might be something that completely bombed in reviews and I'm like oh actually I enjoyed that mm. only because it made me think about things and mm. um, you know but at the same time um, I think because like I, I've mentioned before habitually going towards entertainment and stuff like that and then feeling a bit empty afterwards yeah um, there's just no you walk away from it without anything yeah do you know what I mean? You could spend yeah. hours on something, walk away from it, and just be like, well, I've got nothing to show for it. That's why, yeah. actually, I started, if anyone follows me on uh, social media, mm -hmm. I started trying to take my um, graphic design stuff quite a bit more seriously. Um, mm. And that's been really fulfilling for me. Um, mm. yeah. Just making something a bit different, a bit <clears throat> unique, and then putting it out there. And it's a lot more fulfilling mm. getting likes on something you've created mm. than just a yeah. selfie. <laughs> bro, bro, I, mean? I saw your... Um your post which was like a card like a game card or whatever what are they called uh which one? Oh, oh yeah like yeah yeah, a, the, yeah yeah like a pokemon card kind yeah, of thing yeah almost yeah the Yu -Gi -Oh yeah, yeah. One. yeah yeah bro that's a sick idea man yeah, i don't man. know like i don't know what you can do with that further but the idea was just so good man. yeah it's man sick. if you go on there there's other stuff that i tried to do i made like a, mm. a sweetness of you man fizzy drink like okay a, a sick can. <laughs> i made a, a mixtape for sudace on an old school cassette <laughs> Made, yeah, these uh, are sick ideas, man. Right. Like, if you, honestly, if you have at the minimum, that. it could be like a very, uh, like a, a very different out of, out there kind of um, art exhibition. Yeah, trust me. That's bro. that's the minimum. But maybe I don't know what else, what other form it could take. But trust me, bro. If you have a look on, um, I don't, I know you haven't got Instagram, but if you ever get a chance, just have a browse through. You might you might enjoy it. And that's for anyone yeah. anyone watching. And yeah, I, I'd like to take that. You know, I, I'm, I'm at the moment. I was taking uh, what's it called commissions and doing work for people, mm. um, and then it kind of, be honest, even though it wasn't that many people, it started getting a bit too much. That mm. I felt like I couldn't deliver because I'm trying to balance so many things at once. Mm. Um, and then you know, obviously, if I'm doing it for other people, then I'm not necessarily doing it for myself. So it's, it's yeah. really struggling. And there's also the element of not feeling confident enough to fulfil people's expectations. Like mm. if you. I've got free reign if I'm doing it for myself because I, you know, I can do whatever I want. But when someone wants something specific, it's yeah. very difficult for me to achieve that, especially when I'm not, I don't feel like I'm at the skill level that I can be to, to do what, mm. you know, if you say I want X, Y, Z, I'm, I can probably only do X. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. But, but um, 
I find it quite therapeutic and quite I don't know it can send a message quite well in it um, yeah and it's just better than put my face out there which you know yeah yeah true anyway yeah <laughs> few few um new things i've been on recently is like um so actually yesterday i was uh, i had this article open for ages i never read it i now i've read about half of it yesterday it's a pretty long article um for people who might be interested it's called what is it called the nuclear family was a mistake oh boy so um it's really good man it's like it shows the history of the family structure how it changed it's very america centric but it yeah. does give you a give you an idea and uh i would really enjoy that and um it allows you to really understand and appreciate um extended family community and the stuff we talked about last episode actually so mm. uh i guess if you it's on the atlantic.com and then uh yeah it's just called the nuclear family was a mistake so that's been really good and um today uh because i was driving a lot today i was listening to a book um audio book um uh is it gender matters or why gender matters uh by dr leonard Sachs, the same guy that wrote the book uh, boys adrift okay. and bro the like the guy is very matter of fact and he and he's not you can't even say he's really conservative in his personal beliefs yeah. but but the science is the science you know what i mean um and certain like mri scans showing brain activity it's just completely different between boys and girls you know and it's just i i, I don't know i just love this stuff bro like yeah. social stuff also I, I was reminded recently of uh neil postman you know who wrote um amusing ourselves to death um that guy was definitely ahead of his time when it came to um uh, diagnosing and predicting where society is going because right. of because of new media forms yeah now he was talking about the tv because that was his time yeah. but is very relevant to today and i just feel like uh, i need to read i need to read the books of his i haven't read and i need to reread amusing ourselves to death because i feel like that's one book that if i kind of master it and i fully understand and digest it it will actually open many realizations for me in terms of understanding society today and, and mm. maybe like where it's going you know so these i I, know, I realize bro i love these things like anything about how society works where it's going like modernity and society like these two, it's sick i love that stuff so yeah, yeah really yeah. good so speaking about the future um i just want to talk a little bit bro before we go into questions about like you know like coronavirus covid19 <laughs> i don't yeah. want to talk about by the, by the way covid19 um you know muslims in india getting attacked yani allah yarham shuhada min min al indians uh, muslim indians as well as uh, syria you know really feels like feels like Hard. the cr- critical turning point now in in syria as well mm. um many things going on man i feel like uh, definitely uh, yani the, the the muslims in myanmar yani we've already forgot them and everyone yani it's crazy yeah, okay so yani may allah be with them with them and you know if nothing else may allah accept the the shuhada and uh, strengthen the iman of those that are there and they're like suffering and struggling through it because ultimately yani life is short you struggle and as long as you keep your iman you know that that's what's important so you know may allah yani strengthen their iman and give them Amen. more iman because of the struggles and allow them to you know die on firm iman as well as us so with all this in mind i think i i find myself often kind of thinking about you know the end of times and like just living in struggles right if i mm. think for example of syrians you know uh, as far as i know syria had a very big middle class when this uh, war or revolution whatever you want to call it kicked off yeah yeah and now these people who were living middle class they find themselves subhanallah yani eating cats to survive you know this place um, yeah yeah having no home no shelter no clothes um in the cold no heating and yeah literally eating cat meat eating dog meat eating grass mm. subhanallah yani i, um, I was um Mm. I was just watch just before we started recording. I was watching yeah. Yeah. Vice put out a new sort of documentary thing, twenty minutes long. It says the children who grew up under ISIS, and mm. it, it makes you think. There's kids there, uh, their whole life. That's just been war, bro. Like yes, that's their generation. Like, it's been going on for so long that there's kids mm. that are like 
Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm yeah, and, and the difference that. between I think war in the past and war in the present is um, pre World War Two, uh, I believe um, pre World War Two or maybe it's World War One. Civilians were hardly uh, involved in war. Yeah, uh, but now it's probably World War Two because World War Two was really when uh, bombers really became more sophisticated and. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the Blitz, for example, the the Germans decided, you know, we're just going to bomb the heck out of the UK. Yeah. And that's where civilians, now they actually see the war right where they live. They're seeing the war uh, yeah. without choosing to go to war, without being in the military. They're now being affected, you know. And then you have Vietnam where, you know, half the forest getting burnt down with napalm, yeah, etc. In recent times, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, like, how do you think about about, like, being ready f- to live in harder times if you know what i mean even I mean, even honestly on the sense of recession anything yeah. like this you know i suppose i had this conversation with my wife yesterday actually we were driving and um we're talking obviously a lot about hijra lately and i made mention of something that you and kaya mentioned a while ago um on mind heist uh, about like the notion of if you don't make decisions and who is going to if you don't do things now to set up the future of your lineage, yeah, then then who, do you really think that they they will? Do, do do I think that my sons will find it easy easier than me to make big decisions that benefit their themselves and the ummah um, when they've got a less attachment to the Muslim world than I than I do? If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and I said to her. You know, dis- I said, uh, you know, I don't mean to sound grand, grandiose and a bit, you know, epic, not epic, but a bit big t- talking. But like, there will be a day when we're probably, you know, there's going to be a, a, a more of an us and them scenario. And we know about that because we know about the, the prophetic tradition and what's been told to us, and what's been prophesized. Whether that's in, you know, 50 years, 100 years, five years, you don't know. Mm-hmm. But a time will come where. It's going to be Dean or Dunya for them, um, quite, quite. You know, I mean, if the Dejel was to appear tomorrow or in ten years or whatever, it's going to be quite clear that they have to make a choice, you know, because mm-hmm. um, that that whether you know they meet him and when I say they, I, I could, it might be my sons, it might be you know four generations down, but they're still. I, I still hold myself responsible because I always think back to the first person that ever embraced Islam. Yeah. in my ancestors and think oh i am a result of his decision or her uh-huh. decision or you, do you know what i mean so yeah yeah so right now i think um what makes sense and i think you know you know at the moment we think about tunisia we think about these countries that we're from and it could be that the whole the whole the whole muslim world could end up like syria in all honesty bro it doesn't it wouldn't surprise me i honestly wouldn't be surprised if that would ha- if that were to happen, because we are so unstable, and even within the countries that we we you know we come from, there's so much um, what's the word? So much at stake, and so many voices that overpower each other. Mm. Um, like they're, they're rarely I see any countries that are like all upon the same sort of thing. You know, we're disunited, quite yeah. frankly, and yeah. we're very prone to infighting, and mm. and then we're very easily manipulated. And when I say we, I mean everyone. Mm-hmm. No matter what group you come from or what mm-hmm. sort of um, identity you hold in the Muslim world, you could be a, an atheist in the Muslim world. You're mm-hmm. still prone to manipulation and prone to, mm-hmm. to you know, you could have a Muslim neighbor, a practicing Muslim neighbor, and you're an atheist. And mm-hmm. you still butt heads on something because you're easily influenced and you forget that they're your neighbor and your countrymen. And you yeah. both want good for each other. You I think I mean? that's especially Arabs, bro. Oh, because yeah, Because... Arabs are very emotional people, and that's why they can you can rile them up easily. Mm. Uh, whereas on the flip side, if you look at, for example, the coup d'état that was uh, attempted in Turkey, yeah, they kind of wow. When I saw that, I was like, "Yo, Arabs would never react like that," <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, it's so, hard, yeah. bro, because like I'll give you an example. I went on uh, Reddit recently. Um, Reddit is quite niche mm. in terms yeah. of. I don't think that uh, the Arab like at least north africa knows it very well but yeah. regardless i went on the tunisian reddit page and it had about three thousand people on it uh, and if anyone knows reddit it's very it's quite central cent centric uh, centric towards um like people that predominantly use a lot of internet and, and maybe gaming and all that kind of mm. that kind of niche people mm-hmm. that are quite savvy weird geeks tech savvy tech savvy we'll call them okay <laughs> it's not facebook basically yeah um 
and I asked the question there about, oh, this is who I am. Obviously, quite anonymous, but this is who I am. This I'm is. I'm gonna my... find your account, bro. I know you posted there recently. <laughs> I deleted that post, bro. I deleted oh. that post. I'll tell you why, though. This is what I'm coming to. So, um, you know, this is who I am. This is what my family's like. You know, I spoke about how I'm practicing and our level of religiosity in, you know, in the most frank way I could put it. Obviously, mm. you can't really m- measure that. Mm. Um, you know, um, what would it be like if we were to move there and live there? You know, kind of getting a feel, mm. bro. It was just nuts, bro. Let me guess. Let me guess. Go on. (laughs) Did they say, why would you come here? Go away. Why would you even think of that? Yeah, so some of them are quite like, oh, why would you do that to your kids and move them to a country that's, uh, you know, like less fortunate or whatever, Mm. you know, uh, poorer country and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Like missing the point completely. Because I labeled the point in there, but other people were like, we don't want any more of your kind here, we already got rid of most of you, and all this other stuff, like practicing Muslims, they don't want practicing Muslims, or at least visibly practicing Muslims. Right, um, okay. Despite the fact that I, you know, I mentioned my profession, and I mentioned, you know, like, I'm not, I'm clearly not an extremist, or whatever you want to call mm. it, yeah. do you understand? But there was still this animosity, and hatred, and blah, blah, blah. Um, in fact, some of the best, but this is a surprising thing. One of the best replies I got was from an atheist who lives in Tunisia. He's Tunisian. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, we've got this person. I've, you know, I can name you an example of this guy. And he lives, he's like a, a pharmacist or a doctor. And people love him and blah, blah, blah. And there's also this woman that lives down the street. And she's an iqabi and people love her and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you will get odd looks and you might get comments. And you might, do you understand? Like, yeah. And it just showed you, I know it's a pocket of the example. It shows you how crazy, like... The, the crazy ideas that exist here also exist there bro and it's the future can go either way bro the future mm. can go either way it, you know I think when we live in a bubble of practicing mm. we forget that there's a vast majority of people that don't and we forget that maybe Allahu Alam I'm not making sweeping statements but we don't know what the state of the governing bodies are and, and how how much do they prioritize religion and, 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 and stuff like this so when the world is in to- turmoil mm. Then, then what's saving you from from? But what's interesting, however, is that when things do go bad, there is this element of people turning back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, mm. um, and there are opportunities for even you know on a smaller scale. You know, when you go through a hardship, you turn back to Allah quite quickly as long as you've yeah, got that notion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you call upon Allah, and 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 sometimes, sometimes that's why bad things happen is to bring mm. you closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't speak for the people that are in Syria and there's people that are in India right now. I can't. And I know yeah. there's there's no doubt going to be situations where people will hide their deen, hide who they are because of fearing for their life. Of course. You know, that's perfectly understandable. Yeah. And for me to say, oh, for me to say, oh, these are bad things are happening, but it's fine because they're getting close to Allah. I know that that's quite, dis- that can be quite dismissive yeah, yeah. of people's yeah, struggles. Yeah. Definitely. Um, because obviously, uh, a test is a test and a, a mm. test you can fail a test and, and you can you know pass a test in it so you would just hope that you pass i suppose isn't it and mm. but it is quite obvious right mm. that when things are harder you just i think it's humility isn't it that that you, you find yourself being humbled but that's i suppose if you're passing the test you find yourself humbled but an equal amount of people might not get that and they might have the opposite you know negative uh, outcome of course, and there's still so, people, bro, like yeah. within these tests that still chase the the hand that feeds them more, which is like I don't know the West and America and the UK, yeah. whatever. Like they they want that. Yeah, it's like you're in- interesting because you're the like talks about this a lot and how yeah. we're desperate. You know, if there's people that are desperate for the approval of the disbelievers, like they're just mm. desperate for it, bro. And and this is you know this is what I could see visibly in these responses I was getting was mm. like they just wanted. So what I kept I kept. <laughs> I was really infuriating some of them. I wasn't replying to the worst ones. I replied oh. to one person and that was it, like a hateful yeah. person. The ones that were nice and decent, I replied to them and we had a decent conversation. But some of them would be like, oh, we don't want you, blah, blah. And I would say, well, that's not very democratic of you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because the reality is I live in a dem- democracy, well, you know, whatever you want to call it, a democracy now. Oh. Um, at least what they want, right? Yeah. So, if you want, you you can't have your cake and eat it. Like, yeah, you're yeah. gonna have to accept me either way because <laughs> that's the reality yeah, yeah, of the situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's tough, bro. And like I said, I I said to my wife, like, if it's a thousand years from now, if it's a hundred years from now, if it's a couple of years from now, what mm. side of the fence do you want to be on? You know, because uh, mm. realistically, 
as far as the Muslim population is growing here, mm-hmm. is this ever going to be a Muslim country? Allahu alam. You never know. You never yeah. know. But would it make more sense to go where Muslims are established and yeah. you say salam alaikum to someone in the street and whatever yeah. the media says and whatever the you know the, the loud voices on the internet are saying, the yeah. shepherd down the road fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the masjid yeah. is still you know, the event's still going off. Do you mm. know what I mean? To strip this land of Deen is gonna mm. be a lot harder than it is to strip the UK or strip the West that doesn't yeah, actually yeah. have the Deen. It's you know, built into the culture, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Whether it's even if it's a culture that isn't you know isn't practicing the the flavor of deen that you do you know maybe it's authentic or there there's bid'ah or there's whatever you can still navigate that yeah definitely well, bro. you know i call that to, go on the average muslim yeah i call them bihabbu rabbana yeah with the egyptian mm-hmm. accent they mm-hmm. just they love allah and his prophet you know alayhi salam so that's that's it that's the default you know and they maybe some are following their desires and some of this but most are at least when it comes to Allah and his prophets sallam, they're like humbled of course you know <laughs> I think there's a lot of talk about so when it comes to like North Africa or, or other countries there's countries in the Muslim world that are very difficult um, for for certain levels of or certain open practices of religiosity right whether that's growing the beard wearing niqab like there's places in uh, in the muslim world where niqab is banned there's places in the muslim world where it's really hard to grow a beard there's do you know what i mean okay. but regardless of that there's still a then there's still prayer and there's still these cool yeah. things yeah and i was you know i'm starting growing towards like if it, if the going gets tough right oh. and you're forced to 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 concede on certain things right mm-hmm. The, as long as your overall benefit is strong, because one thing I one thing we were discussing is like okay, there's 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 facade everywhere, you mm-hmm. know. There's zina in this country in the UK. There's zina over there in the Muslim world. Mm-hmm. There's zina, do you know what I mean? There's there's yeah. there's stealing and theft and and whatever here. There's the same everywhere. Any yeah. sin that you want to do in the UK, you can do it anywhere else in the world. Mm. The difference is, like you said, the culture is still mm. geared towards. It. Uh, the anti of that there's still yeah. this issue of uh, hishim, uh, yeah. you know of, 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 of uh, shame yeah. r- sh- shame and being a bit yeah. rude and being a bit and and i think and despite the fact that the loudest voices in those countries tend to be from like capital and bourgeoisie and maybe middle class families and, and and things like that you've still got generations of people that have grown up in traditional societies in traditional areas in rural areas you yes. know most of these countries despite the yes. fact that there's pockets of like for example take Algeria I've been to the capital Algiers and yeah. it's phenomenal it's huge you know uh-huh. and there's areas there that are proper upper class right yeah. so if you would speak to those people you would probably get upper class western values if you would speak to them they probably don't yeah. even speak Arabic to you they probably speak French and then no, on the internet, we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly but on the internet they're probably some of the loudest voices maybe vocal exactly, about feminism yes. yeah, vocal exactly, about democracy yeah. they yeah. want this and this and this like Twitter is such like not uh, uh, you know representative of the reality and of course but when you're on yeah. the ground bro take yeah. yourself away from these capitals and these big cities yeah majority of the land is just people exactly bro. yeah everyday exactly. people exactly. and like I think people that's think that for example Saudi Arabia the way it's changing or mm. um, you know maybe Egypt, you know, because Egypt has gone through a, a good five years now of the the media in Egypt has really changed its tone a lot, okay? Yeah. Like, it's got pretty bad uh, from what I hear. Um, but still, there are 90 million Egyptians, you know, 10 million of, uh, uh, you know, 80 million of which, you know, they're not influenced by that. They're not even of aware course. of that stuff, you know? Of course. And this is reality, bro. So, okay, I'll put it into perspective for the listeners, right? When we watch TV on whatever Arab channel, you are seeing high society on TV. Mm. You are seeing middle class slash upper class on TV. It's mm. the same as if someone in, in Algeria, right, this kid that's grown up in Algeria or Morocco or wherever, sees the West, sees TV, like TV shows and movies in the West, and thinks everybody in the West lives like that. They don't know about the person down the road that's on benefits, has got, you know... Uh, <laughs> they can't work or is on you know whatever do you understand what I'm yeah, trying to say yeah, like yeah. they don't know about the chavs and the, the do you understand they don't know about this stuff they don't know about yeah. lower class and working class people the scooter scooter robbers or whatever they don't know about any of that bro because <laughs> yeah, all yeah. they see is the movies and this, and that's yeah. why they want to go and it's yeah. the same the same NHS chess breaking down potholes yeah, and I, it's, it's something you have to break down like I've got yeah you know, I've got friends that have obviously, like, f- such as yourself and other friends have moved over to uh, such and such countries and stuff. And mm. 
that you know they they they're living a more realistic life. They they see more realistic things. It's hard when you live in a capital of any country, bro. I I saw um, I I don't know if you, there's a brother. His name is Mohammed Andalusi, and he's in uh, Mauritania at the moment. I don't know anything about Mauritania. I don't mm. know anything. Mm. Um, I just knew that he was in near North Africa, or yeah. some say North Africa, right? He was showing me the capital on yeah. Instagram, uh. and. There were things there that you can get here. Like it was suddenly, it was just like any other place. Like any yeah. city's, any country's capital is mm. going to have everything in it. Mm. So to shape your opinion of the whole country based on those isolated sort of experiences is isn't yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, but By so regardless, way, go on. Your new president, bro, is sick. Is he? That's what Everyone I keeps hear. telling me, but I don't know anything about him. That's what I hear, bro. The the me, the little bird told me that he's sick. Everyone he's says a, that seems bro. like a principled guy, mashallah. So I heard. I'm not here mm. to get politi- political, but I heard he's just he's basically he was a teacher and he didn't mm. want to be president, but people mm. kept like his students kept forcing him to run yeah. because they thought he'd be good for it, and he just literally. Mm. And even uh, I think one of his opposition members was in prison, and he didn't want to do any sort of. Um, political sort of um what's the word you know when they start go around trying to recruit not recruit but like oh the, yeah, the yeah, party yeah, yeah. And stuff. yeah he didn't want to do any of that until his mm. opponent came out of prison so it'd be a fair sort of thing oh really but if there's this anyone on tour, with yeah hint, principal man yeah if there's anyone with a hint of like i don't really want to do this yeah then they're probably <laughs> good for the job that's the best yeah. we're gonna get <laughs> yeah it's true and um you know that they're trying to pass that law to make inheritance equal or whatever yeah uh yeah he was like he just straight he's like no we not, you know he's like i think he said something like you know what's in the quran is very clear and uh we don't we're not changing it you know see this is i think it takes a wise man to realize that some of our most valuable things even economically and and, and touristically because that's a lot of the, where a lot of the money comes from yeah, some yeah. of the most valuable things are the cultures that we have if you mm. become exactly like the countries that you admire to be then you have nothing mm. left for yourself you just become like a not even a yeah, carbon like copy a, bro you become like, like a rubbish a cheap, version of that exactly co- yeah, bro yeah. and that's the thing like I experience that a lot when I go to Tunisia a lot of the areas in Tunisia that are touristic are mm. just like uh, cheap knockoffs of like yeah. I don't know other countries like Greece or, or mm. do you know what I mean south of <laughs> France or whatever yeah um, and there's some countries that really held on like I, I'd, I'd argue that Morocco when I go to Morocco certain areas in Morocco are very they've, they've held on to that culture so much yeah no doubt and, yeah. and that's why they value it and they, they mm. yeah they make money out of it but because yeah. they valued it they kept they mm. kept hold of that yeah yeah definitely so for that's us true. to be like oh we want to get rid of this certain aspect of our religion or this certain mm. thing of our culture or whatever and be more western and be more this you don't understand that's all you've got going for you <laughs> like yeah that's it's like it. your that's usp what... isn't it of course of yeah but bro like okay let's say you go to Tunisia or whatever uh-huh. i'm talking about what happens when the hard times hit like like assuming it's gonna it's gonna come yeah like yeah do you think about that and do you like plan for that or like what what do you mean hard times like um uh, like i'll tell i'm talking about um bro all the stuff i fantasize about bro like not being able to eat three meals a day like being on one meal a day being yeah. on yeah uh whatever it is you know, you know what, physical bro, like, strife it's difficult bro because i don't know what battle you, at the end of the day you have to fight a particular battle um you mean literal or metaphorical battle uh, well, hunger is a battle. Like you have to. Oh, stop. okay, metaphorical. You know I mean? Yeah, but depending. Yeah. The, no, no. Yeah, let's say the, in terms of the metaphorical one, like yeah. in terms of the hardship. So battling through hardship, mm. um, anywhere you are. Mm. And this is one thing we've been talking about. Me and the missus is like the dunya is the dunya. No matter where you go, there mm. is no notion of the grass is greener. It's just what battle do you want to ba- face? Like, okay. Now, the thing is about we said is like here in the uk or in the west right i can look at someone else i can look at the public and feel like i don't belong with them Mm. and they can look at me and feel like i don't belong with them either okay Mm. now over in a muslim country i can feel like i belong with that muslim country i i'll feel like i belong with them they Mm. might not all feel like i belong with them Mm. do you understand they might look differently to me but i will still have this notion it's like when you walk into a masjid you know that you can say salam alaikum and you, this is where you should be because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this is where you should be. Yeah. Do you understand? But yeah. when you're both 
strangers to each other, then you don't ever feel at home. Um, now, I only feel like that more so because I'm, I don't know, I'm down south and there isn't really any Muslims here. And do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And okay. But you know, maybe when you're in, walking through East London, it might feel a little bit different. I don't know what people feel like around the country. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I've I've wondered that because you, I've walked through areas of London and I'm like, bro, like there's no, <laughs> everybody's Muslim here. Like, mm-hmm. how do you do you ever feel isolated? Do you ever feel alone? Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also Muslim countries, bro, where Islam flourishes. You mm-hmm. know, there's areas like there's areas like for example, Pakistan, for example, areas where you wouldn't see any anybody not praying when the adhan goes off like it's unheard of you know mm. same in, in in mecca medina same in uh, various places in the world mm. so it's about where you want to go through these hardships now here they could turn around tomorrow bro things could get bad here things get bad mm. here and they could turn around tomorrow and just be like well uh we don't want this and we're going to teach your kids this and you have to do this mm. and you have to do that and they could equally do that wherever you go. They could equally mm. do that wherever you go. But the predominance of values that we've got in our deen still mm. existed in our countries, no matter what yeah. they do, in terms of, and, and that goes back to the mm. culture. It's ingrained. So in basically, is it, is what you're, you're what you're saying is that let's say, oh, times are going to get hard. The main thing is the the battle you want to kind of fight is the battle of being amongst the correct people when that happens. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because I say it could get really bad one day, bro. It could yeah. get really bad. Like I said, when I said at the, the, the beginning about the Dejel example, about those yeah. kind of big, yeah. big uh, signs, you know, of the coming of the hour. Yeah. Where do I want, where would I want to be when that happens? Yeah. Medina. Do I want to be <laughs> stuck here? Do you understand? And being like, oh my God. Yeah. You understand? When, when, it, when, okay, let's say hypothetically, Imam al Mahdi appears, right? And I don't know what the situation is. I'm not going to start conspiracy theories and what it's going to be like and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's for but another The reality episode, is, the Muslims yeah. are going to be somewhere, right? Yeah. And the non Muslims are going to be somewhere else, okay? Uh, okay. Um, so, where, where do I want to be? Where do I want my family to be? Do I want yeah. to be trapped here? Do I want to be held ransom? <laughs> yeah. Do I want to be. Do you understand? Do I want yeah. them to be uh, people that can, can speak Arabic, can travel freely, can. And it could be that, you know, like I said earlier, the whole Muslim world could end up like Syria is now. Yeah. It could yeah, happen. I understand, yeah. It could happen. And yeah, we could be se- trying to seek aid from people. We could, but at the same time, it's a deen mm. or dunya matter. Like, mm. I don't. So you're, like, you don't prepare for that? I'll give you an example. Yeah. An example. Do you, I mean, I don't know how long you lived in the UK, but did you ever consider mm. buying a house here, in, like in the UK? No. Nope. And this is the thing. There's people that consider, Muslims that consider buying houses here. Muslims yeah. that have bought houses here. Maybe their Muslims. bank balance nicer than mine, though. That's the difference. Of course. And yeah, <laughs> one, could argue, one could argue that they could leave the country and still benefit off the rent. And that's, a, that's pretty smart. Yes, right? that's true, yeah. But if you... Yeah, no, no, and if that's the long-term goal, then you know what? More power to you. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're doing it with the notion that this is it for you, you're setting mm. roots here, yeah. it's quite difficult. Mm-hmm. Now... I don't know what the scenario would feel would be like if you're like a revert or you've got different, co- you've got no connection to a Muslim world. Yeah, it's, it's it's easier for me to talk the way I am because I've got connections. If I didn't have connections in the Muslim world, I don't know how easy I'd be having this conversation. However, of course. however, there's a many reverts that have moved out there. You know, I was listening to even um, I was listening to you know John Fontaine. Was yes, I do. Podcast. He lives yeah. in Uganda now because yeah. he just couldn't deal with the UK anymore, mm. quite, quite frankly. And mm. he he liked it better then. He liked the mm. people there and the Muslims. It's there. a globalized world. Exactly. Is he the and only he's... white guy in the village over there? Bro, I think if you listen to he did a podcast with um, a brother called Nordin, and he spoke mm-hmm. a lot about Africa and, and Nordin must countries. be North African, right? He's from Cameroon. Nordin's oh, from okay. Cameroon. Yeah, I spoke to him a few times. He he uh, hangs out with um, Mufti quite a lot. Okay. Sick. But yeah, it's an interesting one for the listeners to mm. listen to that because he he goes through Africa, not North Africa, but everywhere else more or less. Oh, know, talks about uh, Gambia, how it is. About Ghana, That's how bad about... our countries are, bro. <laughs> no, because it's quite well known that that North Africa is Muslim, but oh, everywhere okay. else there's there's differences and there's mm, a bit bits and there's pieces, bit more nuance and stuff. So he's talking about that and his experiences, and he's literally travelled to all of these countries in Africa. So mm. he kind of lists his experiences there and how mm. different one country is to another. But nice. at the end of the day, he's he's decided to live out there at least he is for the moment yeah um, and he's a revert and there's plenty of reverts that have moved out i mean look at mutabil for example napoleon mm. Mm. he's out in mecca he's out in saudi sorry mm. um and obviously he's quite fortunate and he's able to do so but i'm saying there's people that have just 
even they, even there's this reverts that even they, once they became Muslim, they were like, well, actually, I'm not really feeling this. <laughs> Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then, yeah. you know, they would have grown up their yeah. whole lives with this culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, I'm, you know, I'm surrounded with people that are making that move. You yourself, you're not, it's not like you're in the UK anymore, bro. Um, when was I in the UK? <laughs> well, I've always, obviously, because I sort of knew of you when you were here. So yeah, I've always true. had it in my yeah. mind that you were here. Yeah. Um, but people come here to benefit and go. Like, mm. uh, people come to uni, study, and then leave. And, and yeah. they take what they can get. I mean, the whole world is kind of becoming a bit like that, where it's like, just take whatever benefits from whatever country you can. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, uh, it's more pick and choose, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Obviously, as long as you've got a certain passport, it's like uh, with the ease of going to the different places, it's become more of that like, yeah, let me check this place out. Let yeah. me taste this. Let me see what benefits I could get here, I mean, then move I, to this place. I always find it interesting because, you know, may Allah bless my dad. Yeah, he, he came to this country maybe, he came to the West in general, I think when he was maybe 17 mm. or so, I think. But mm. either way, he was around that age. Mm. And um, he hasn't built or done anything here in terms mm. of route setting, right? Mm. Although all his friends bought houses and have businesses here and whatever, mm. he hasn't done anything of the sort. And he okay. always spoke to me about opportunities that arose. And sometimes he's like, oh, I wish I did this or I wish I did that here. But he always talks about all these opportunities that he could have had here or yeah. done here. Um, I remember apparently once like someone gave him keys to like a shop. said, mm. listen, just take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Yeah just do it like you can run this better than me just do it sort of thing mm. and he didn't because he, he always had in his mind Tunisia and back home and, and, and mm. like he was he was one of those sort of uh, immigrants where just send mm. money back home because obviously his mum was still there and his sister was still there and he had the responsibility and a connection there so he might not have had, he might not have had the same reasons that I'm talking about now in terms of Dini yeah. but there was still this connection um, yeah. you know and I grew up obviously in the UK so I had a bit of a not an, not an animosity towards <laughs> the Muslim world, but like I wasn't really interested because mm-hmm. this is this is where I grew up, so this is my thing. But the more I grew up and the more responsibilities I had, and now that I've got kids, and now that I'm, I see this kind of dunya for what it is, kind of thing, bro. Like all I want to do in my life, go sit in that sort of rural town, bro, and get yourself a building. hammock, bro. I want to build stuff. I want to go and do a bit of um, agriculture, like go and. Yeah harvest in the in the harvest season maybe gets a few animals mm. like that kind of stuff bro i'm so done with 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 the the rush and the 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 rush for and i know mm. i'm saying that now like it's some sort of grass is greener when i get over there i'm sure there's going to be 101 problems and there's mm. going to be this drive to chase dunya because everybody's chasing dunya so there's yeah. a natural thing to but, but bro like i feel like that lifestyle of let's say living in a more rural area um especially if you're like uh you know growing something yourself and this kind of thing mm. i feel like that prepares you for any hardships that might come you know mm. um like for example you know water shortage is on the horizon you know in many yeah, countries exactly. Exactly. and all of this stuff you know so like that's why I personally even i'm not saying like i'm i'm hard i'm not saying that but i always feel like i need to be getting harder and harder and tougher yeah. you know i need to be able to um uh, I need to be able to withstand X amount of hunger. I need to be able yeah. to do some kind of martial arts. I need to know how to, you know what I mean? Like, I need to know how to be out in the cold and then stay warm. Like, challenge I don't know, bro. I, it's not challenging myself. I just, oh. I just feel like... Um, soft. I feel soft. I feel maybe vulnerable because of that. And because it could hit you at any point and you're exactly already. and I feel it could hit. maybe I'm just paranoid and stuff but yeah. I like to to know I'm ready right I, I, I'd argue you know I feel similar because like okay let me let, let's go back to what I said earlier about I watched that short documentary about the children that yeah that I watched that too in, by the way huh I watched oh, that too watch oh yeah. okay it was about they put it out a few hours ago um, oh maybe it was uh, I definitely watched it but anyway go on yeah but but seeing those kids talk, bro, um, yeah, and they're talking with a relative calmness, yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, how is he not breaking down? Mm. I'm not saying that that's strength. Like a lot of that is trauma, okay. but at the same time, mm. um, that kid can now handle things that I say handle. But do you know what I mean? They've been exposed to things. Yeah. And because of that exposure, they've got a level of strength that you can't really compete with. 
um, mm. and that's because they've been put through such difficult times. Mm. Um, and you know, maybe, know but maybe. that might make you weaker as well. Of course, of course, of yeah. course. But like when you've uh, got so many people around you that have also been yeah. through that same thing, yeah. If you're able to talk to each other about it, then yeah. you can find some strength there because some yeah. of the biggest sort of sources of strength is is knowing that someone else is also going through the same thing as you, and you mm. can discuss that and and sort of and support each other in it, and it's yeah. actually quite a phenomenal thing. Yeah. Yeah. One thing like a uh, practical thing that I realized I don't have. For example, you know, if my car breaks, like I can't fix it. Yeah. Like I that's wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weak. That's yeah. pathetic, man. Like yeah. that's, you're so reliant. You're so reliant. Like for whatever reason, let's say the garage is shut down. People, you know, in UA is full of, um, you know, uh, foreigners, right? So yeah. let's say something happened. Uh, all the foreigners go home. And let's say I'm here for some reason. I cannot fix my car. Meaning, I cannot, like, let's say I want to go to Dubai. That'll take me a day to walk to Dubai. Maybe two days, three days to walk to Dubai. So, that's weak, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, yeah. how to fix a car. Uh, for example, you know. Uh, these are the kind of things that I would like to have some level of knowledge in. You know what I mean? So, this goes back to what we were saying earlier. Mm. About things to look forward to and setting things for yourself. Mm. So, like, if given the opportunity, what I would like to do is l develop more practical hobbies. For example, like I really want to get into like, um, like carpentry and DIY and fixing things and and making things and do you yeah. know what I mean? And and at least in Tunisia, like, I've have a house that's established and that's not going, not necessarily going anywhere. Whilst yeah. here, I've got no desire to. Mm. Do much with my apartment mm. here because mm. it's just a rented apartment. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm going to leave it for someone mm. else. Yeah, um, at least there I could be leaving that, you know, Allah yeah. Alam for the uh, countless generations to come. Yeah, um, you just don't know, you know. Land yeah. is land stays for a while, mm. you know. Even if the house goes, the land's still there. Yeah. So, yeah, but I I think that's what a lot of people have always advised is. You know, make the money that you can here and see if you can get out. <laughs> see if you can go somewhere else. Mm. But yeah, there is an argument. There is a counter argument to that. And people do say, you know, well, there's Muslims here and there's. Mm. But I've been, you know, the, this whole discussion about Hijra is reunited and and um, it's kind of. Uh, I've realized that everyone talks about it. Mm. Um, like the people that, at least the, the people that I know and I speak to, mm -hmm. they either want to go or they're already planning to. Mm -hmm. um, they want to go and they can't. For example, mm. so there's a lot of people like, like for example, I know a lot of people that are from Afghanistan, and it's difficult for them to go back there. They're, so they say, "Oh, I'd love to go to Egypt, or I'd love to go to Morocco, I'd love to go to all these countries," um, but they just can't because there's nothing there for them immediately. Um, but it's still something that they aspire to do one day. And yeah, but like, okay, here's an example. Like, you, <laughs> if you were to die, if I was to die here, bro, like, I just feel like. Just feel wrong, you know. It feel mm. really wrong for me to die in this country. I don't know why. I just feel like I, I know. Obviously, death is a different scenario, but just to be buried here, so far away from from like the Umrah, in a mm. sense, it's just quite a difficult thing to to swallow. Because a lot yeah. of a lot of people say, if you're in this, U if you're in the UK and you're not giving dawah, then there's no point in you really being there, mm -hmm. you know, um, on a larger scale of things. Yeah. Um, but obviously everybody's here for their different reasons people are born here and there's an argument that if you're born here then this is who you are so what can you do but bro I look at you know I, I look at my work colleagues I look at I walk down the street bro and I just don't feel like part of the society here um, mm. I don't feel like like I'm not engaged in, in in a lot of politics or a lot of you know there's a lot of community things that go on in, in the UK that yeah. you're just not interested in because you're not part of, you don't feel like a part of that community and mm. there is this big drive of integration isn't there and there used to be this big drive back in the 90s at least of multiculturalism and oh let's let's all sort of sing songs and yeah. sing kumbaya and hold hands and britain will be a rainbow colored multicultural paradise right yeah <laughs> but even so like mm. still there's pockets of communities people don't want to mix yeah a lot of communities just don't are not interested mm. in mixing because mm. they'll never be they'll never want to mix with anyone else because they're more comfortable yeah. being with their, their own people yeah. you know what I'm saying that's what I was saying the other day I'll say it I'll say it straight bro Go multiculturalism it. doesn't work it can't yeah. bro because like you can be kind to each other but you can't integrate yeah. 
Yeah, because you can't all, um, you can't have different cultures in one place, right? Because mm. my brother was saying this, yeah? He's like, if a white guy's interacting with another guy, let's say this other guy is a freshie from whatever country, whether it's Eastern Europe or yeah. whatever, they don't know how to actually interact because they have different norms, right? Mm. And when you have different norms, you don't know what to expect from the other person. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's why uh, that's uh, that's where fear comes from in a way, right? It's like I don't know what to expect from you, you know. So yeah. when when you get that, let's say let's say you have like three different people from three different countries in one place living together, um and they all have different cultures, different norms, it's like each one is kind of paranoid paranoid of the other two, like they don't know what they can expect from them, yeah. you know. Even the way they the way they buy and sell, the way they, like, I don't like Let's say I'm a white guy, you're Romanian. Like I don't know how this transaction goes. Like I'm gonna deal with you in in my in my English way, but then you don't react the way an English person would react. And so now I feel like you've just been rude to me. When yeah. when for him he wasn't being rude. He just acted what's normal to him. And so this could, can only happen a certain amount before people just start getting fed up of each other. You yeah. need a common. Uh, way of behaving with each other isn't it the people that are loudest about multiculturalism from ethnic backgrounds anyway aren't even too attached to their cultures because if they were it, they'd struggle to to really manifest that in the in the truest form um because you know for, for example islam and, and and culture are quite deeply intertwined if i was to for example, when when we we had like events at work and stuff where it was like multicultural multiculturalism things, right? So they did a day where they went to a masjid, and then they the next day they went to like a, a Hindu temple, and then mm. they went to like a Sikh. And they went to a pub. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> this is it. So I'm like, well, I'll go to the first one, and I'm not going to the rest because yeah. I'm not going. I don't want to disrespect you by not getting involved in your you know passing the candle around and, and whatever it is they were doing do you know yeah. what i mean like that kind of stuff mm. so but but they get annoyed about that like a lot of people a lot of non-religious folk get annoyed they're like well you know we're being we're being respectful of yours and getting involved with yours well the least you can do is get involved in ours mm. they don't get this concept of shirk bro they don't get the concept that like yeah. no i can't get involved in that like that's mm. my belief yes fine you do what you want to do but mm. i can't do that yeah <laughs> but that's, that's not multiculturalism that that's yeah. not true multiculturalism because I guess what they haven't realized is that it's part of their culture to have this f thing of like all religions are kind of the same and all cultures are the same like we value yeah. them equally whereas as a muslim we would say no like uh, religion wise no like there's yeah. only one true religion the rest is batal yeah and, 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 and then it, so even cultural wise this is like uh, also controversial for some people the idea that not all values are equal hmm you know, like Islamic values are correct and true. And you might find some of those values in other places. Yeah. Right. But if your values like go against Islamic values, those those are bad values. Yeah, exactly. You know, but and, multiculturalism and, tries to say like, no, no, like all the values are kind of like good. And it's all like subjective. Yeah, get the like, as if it's like different cuisines. This is the danger I was talking about in a previous episode when it came to like the left wing and right wing. Like you're going to have battles either way and going the way we're going which is sort of like a more open and left-wing society anyway yeah it, generally in terms of the people's mm. beliefs and the people's practices mm. it's just going to get too much and what's going to end up happening mm. is like islam here i strongly believe it by the way i see it it will, will not be able to 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 flourish here amongst the masses if they keep leaning towards things that will eventually collapse um for example too much so we're, we're moving more towards freedom of this freedom of thought freedom of gender freedom of sexuality mm. freedom of mm. all this freedom when, we, when is, islam has come to to moderate our lives right yeah and suddenly you self-moderating becomes someone else's problem right yeah, so yeah, you, yeah even yeah. if you're even we're at a point now where we, we all we can really do which is fine all we can really do is say well i believe this and i'm going to do this and this because mm. i believe this right mm. but now because your own belief system isn't aligned to that to that which the masses do mm. and it and actually on paper it technically goes against what they're trying to promote which is you know freedom of xyz and then that you start getting asked the tough questions how much can you water down your religion before mm. you you lose it how much can yeah, you say yeah, well yeah. no i don't want my son learning about mm. let's be real i don't want my son learning about masturbation in school 
right? Oh no, but it's good. It's good to educate, and you know the kids are going to do this anyway. We might as well. Well, I don't want that, right? And I don't believe that that's the case. And I don't. Mm. Do you understand? And I don't want him. But no, your kid has the the right to to make his own decisions in life because that's what they say now. Like even if mm. you go on social media and and look at what non-Muslims talk about, you know, yeah. um, there's a war on 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 parenting because mm. they want kids to have their own. Mm. freedom before they've got a fully formed brain yeah the parents that are celebrated Mm. these days are the parents that say i believe this son and these are all the options for you so you pick one that feels good to you yeah 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 yeah. with your three-year-old mind yeah well this is what i realized recently bro is um just kind of came to my mind like basically uh this is a this is a this is like a a principle in life yeah just remember it because this really applies everywhere and allah it came from allah that you know allah says surah rahman um you know, um, and the ayah before that, which I can't remember, is, is talking about how Allah created everything in the, in the mizan, in the balance. And Allah specifically says, like, don't break the balance, yeah? yeah. And which means, like, any extreme uh, will eventually crumble. And yeah. often what happens is then people go to the other extreme, right? Yeah. And so if you think about it, this is how it goes. So the, it, we've gone very much liberal, right? In the West, it's gone very much liberal. And now it's going to go more uh, right-wing, if you like. Yeah. So now you've got more patriotism and more, uh, you could say, uh, you, I don't know if you call it racism, but uh, you, you get the point, right? It's like Trump won because yeah, yeah, yeah. people yeah. are going the other extreme. Like they're fed up of the the this freedom of this and freedom of that. And I can't, like I'm an American and I'm white and I'm Christian and we are the majority and this they feel like this was our country initially yeah. and all of that and you're saying i can't say that these things that go against my values are wrong like i'm not allowed to even express that like come on man and so this is the thing like you're it's already all about seeing, extremes mm. you're already seeing left-wing yeah. muslims and right-wing mm. muslims uh, yeah because they feel like they have to fall into a camp when we're not even part of this bird bro do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Forget wings, wing, bro. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I We're see not what you did there. I see what you did. <laughs> it's not our discussion, really, because mm. we're not going to win. You can't align yourself with either, yeah. because ultimately, although it might be okay now at this mm. point to be, you know, maybe leaning more left mm. in the in the future, it mm. won't be. But then yeah. you'd be like, well, why do you think people align themselves now to like people like, um, oh God, what's his name, the psychologist bloke, Jordan oh, Peterson. Man. That's the one, and he's a bit more right wing, I think, and like he believes in God and these sort of mm, things. And people maybe, say yeah. he's a bit more right wing. Mm. So yeah, people align with him because it's mm. fighting the counter, you know, it's, it's the counter narrative yeah, to yeah. you know this ex- extreme liberalism yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You know, it will get to a point where he'll start saying mm. things, and then we'll go the other yeah. way. The pendulum keeps swinging, and we're just holding. You know, what I reckon would happen, bro, in the West <laughs> is that um, so you you you're always going to have uh, I guess two camps, maybe more of Muslims. Yeah, like yeah. one camp would be like, yes, we will water down our deen. And we will, I'm, I'm, even you see some like educated Muslims um, giving fatawa that just allow you to kind of blend in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and they might even be like legit fatawa and stuff, but it is in the end kind of watering down, right? Um, and a lot of the religion becomes based on um, uh, what do they call like ruchas and stuff like, yeah. uh, you know, permission to do something which isn't ideal in this circumstance. But then a lot of the religion all becomes that, yeah? So you got one camp which is like, okay, yeah, we'll water it down a little bit. Um, and that's like maybe, uh, yeah, so th- there'll be that type, yeah? And then you'll have the other type who are like being more stubborn and firm, right? Yeah. But I think overall, um, the type that water down will lose out because as society goes to the extreme left, eventually it's going to go to the extreme right, yeah? Because um, just fed up of it. Extremes, isn't it? Extreme breeds the other extreme. And so yeah. when everything goes right... And then people, the mainstream are being more vocal that they're just not really interested in having Muslims in their country or whatever. Um, Then those who water down their religion, they're going to still be bundled in with the Muslims, but they would have left a lot of their religion behind them. Whereas those that were stubborn, at least they're going to get whatever, persecuted, whatever, because they actually are being what they are, you know? And in the end, people respect you more as well for that, so... I just don't think like uh, as long as as if we, if we're not giving Dow on like a major scale, mm. there's no real. I, I know it sounds a bit like giving up hope or whatever. There's mm. no real longevity here. You yeah, know? the people that travelled, the the Muslims of the past that came to these countries initially came to give Dawah. 
uh, I'm talking like way in the past, like from the from yeah. you know the the Khulafa Rashidun when they spread Islam, they traveled to those countries to spread mm. Islam. That was a main goal. They didn't mm. go to work, they didn't go to for economic reasons. That was the main reason they went, and that because of that goal, that's why those countries became Muslim countries. That's why mm. North Africa became Muslim predominantly, and and parts mm. of Asia, etc. Um, mm. But because we haven't come here to establish the religion and to give that dawah, mm. um, then we're building something that essentially is either it will stay strong until it crumbles because mm. you can only stay with the value the core values for so long before someone knocks it off the, the park yeah. or it becomes so watered down that the only thing that you have left of Islam is your surname mm. um, and you could tell yeah my ancestors came from mm. you know, uh, yeah. such and such country mm. and that's it mm. because there are Muslims like that today that mm. are you know there's people that I've spoken to bro who I didn't even know that they came from Muslim families that mm. look that completely you know non-Muslim English to me yeah and, and they're like oh yeah 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 my uh, my su such and such and so and so is, is Muslim and I'm like really but I remember mm. like some guy bro um, you know drinks uh, strip clubs uh, English name all this other stuff all you know like full 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 English guy bro mm. um, and uh, he came up to me and this was back when I started practicing he's like oh my grandma's a Muslim and I was like really wow. was, yeah yeah she came from uh, I can't remember what country it was but he obviously sees himself as Muslim now as um, sorry as Eng uh, English now so he's completely mm. removed that identity and right. to think that that lineage God knows how long that Muslim lineage has been going on for mm. right and it kind of just got lost there at the grandmother yeah, yeah. Um, and think, think you like, never know bro maybe Allah will guide him of course of course you no, of mm. course and that's one thing you never know you never mm. know um but if it's not a constant thing in your teaching and you're not promoting that, obviously yeah, Allah, yeah. Allah guides and Allah misguides yeah. who He wills. Yeah. But to just just mm. to see that was just mm. so sad because mm. I don't want that happening to. Mm. I don't know if or, I'm as pessimistic as you when it comes to the UK because I feel like uh, certain. I guess I kind of feel like you never know, and I also feel like. These uh, three million or whatever Muslims not really gonna leave, right? Um, no, of course, bro. So you never know. The, but the Muslim community oh, in the UK, uh, generally speaking, in terms yeah. of like the areas where there's a, like London, Birmingham, yeah, maybe Manchester. I'm not too clued up on Manchester personally, mm. but these are these are areas where yeah, Muslims are strong and doing some really good work, bro. Let's not let's, yeah. there's no two ways about it. I mean, think of the charity work that's coming out of there. Think of yeah. the businesses that are coming out there. Think of the media that's being produced there. And like media now is getting to a level where I'm actually proud of it. Not like mm. ten years ago where it was a bit like, oh my God, why are we doing this? This is awkward. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're talking about we're talking about current affairs now. We're talking about mm. we're, we're, our scope has broadened a lot. The practice in Muslim scope has has broadened now. Like even that yeah. podcast that you sent me, right? Um it's it's Muslims talking about current affairs. Mm. It's not Muslims just giving reminders. Cause that's what we were doing for a while. We were doing mm. charity and doing dawah work, mm. right? That's all we were doing. We weren't mm. tackling societal problems. We weren't talk talking about you know what's going on in the world and how we can help mm. and what we should do in long term plans and all this stuff. I am not. I don't want to dismiss that in any way, shape, or form. The only worry I have is like how long can that go for before it gets shut down by X, Y, and Z? And that can happen anywhere, bro. That can happen even in the Muslim world. Yeah, you know that can happen in the Muslim mm. world. I'm not. I'm not trying to be naive about that. But yeah. ultimately, things will get shut down everywhere. <laughs> like, that's mm. just the reality. Things mm -hmm. can get shut down everywhere, but the deen, there's still going to be deen in Muslim countries that you won't find in the UK. Yeah. You know? I think, bro, definitely on an individual level, it's good to be in a Muslim society amongst Muslims. Yeah. And the closer you can find a community t that has your values, the better, right? Yeah. Um, on, the, on the other side, though, on a meta kind of level, I think the battle is the same battle, actually. And I yeah, feel like all these problematic uh, ideas that have been promoted in certain countries, they're coming to a Muslim country near you, you know? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, so it's yeah. like, that's why, that's where the whole, what are you doing with that other eight hours of your day comes in? Yeah. You know, how will, how will you put up a defense of the truth kind of thing? I, and there are so many shapes and forms, you know, of how that can be done. Um, and, you know, recently, maybe six months ago, I, uh, a friend of mine kind of made me realize that once somebody is like, if you want to influence, like make change in a society, 
you actually have to really focus on the very young people. And when I say young, I don't mean like 25 year olds. I mean, you know, five year olds, 10 year olds. Yeah. This is the pe the people who are the most in, you know, influenceable in a positive way, of course. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, the 20 year old and the 30 year old, they're much harder to change and to mm. improve than the younger people. So, you know, the, the role of parenting is, is just incredibly important, incredibly big, the, the role. Like, never, never, never downplay that, man. That, that's such a big one. If Like, I, I always felt this, and, and maybe I kind of forgot it a little bit, but if, if all you did was raise your kids right, to have like a very strong mindset, um, and to be able to be firm, then you did a real good job, man, because mm -hmm. that is the most important thing. And sometimes I see people who have done great things, whether it's charity, kind of activism, whatever. Yeah. But then when you see their kids, it's kind of a disappointment. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And it's like, like net net, was this person on point? You start kind of questioning, or at least I start thinking about myself, like, what if I have these goals of doing this and this and this and this, but like, what if my kids didn't work out well? There's an element of it's not in my control, but you got to do what you do, what you can do, what you know to be right. And then obviously yeah, you trust it's, Allah. It's tough, bro. And I think a lot mm. of it, you know, uh, we can get lost in grand, grand plans and mm. forget the stuff that's right under our noses. Mm. It's really mm. easy to do mm. so. Yeah. And I think that's why for me, um, mm. Allah knows best, but my mm. goal right now is to simplify my life mm. um, and set, you know, goals and stuff that are, that are small but powerful and impactful um, that changes just a few people's lives instead of every like the, as many as I can mm, yeah. um, because I, I strongly feel like Allah will judge me on the quality of what I can produce as opposed to the quantity of it like yeah I could build masajid and I could you know what I mean I could help people across the world and, and all of that and if I really wanted to go hard on that then I, I'd be flying from place to place and you know what I mean I'd be joining up with, with these aid workers and doing the most I can and you understand mm -hmm. um and i don't think i'd be around my kids and i don't think i would leave much impact because it would be so, i've spread myself so thinly like at the end of the day you're just one person yeah you, know, you you are one human being and it's not to dismiss what you're capable of and we hear of people that have that are in history that were just one human being that changed so much mm. um but i don't think that they a lot of them set out to change so much they just took steps they just try yeah to and then Allah guided them down exactly. a great path so, so if you're sincere and Allah wants that for you then Allah mm. will provide that for you yeah but to lose what's right in front of you because of that it's mm. very difficult so I think if yeah. you can strip yourself down in terms of strip down how complicated your life is and I think that's the issue that that's often here and, and in the west is like life can become so you can burden yourself with so many things that you don't really need um, but you feel you need, you know, whether that's all these, uh, you know, the newest devices, the newest entertainment system, or the newest car, or the newest what X Y Z. Like the dunya is just always like you're always trying to be sold something, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's even in the Muslim countries when you live in the capitals, you live in more built-up areas or whatever. You're just constantly like a victim of of marketing. So you're the dunya is just in its in your face, mm. you know. And damn, bro, making me feel bad. But it's not. <laughs> but it's like okay, like when was the last time like. You could look up at, I know it's going to sound deep, but you could look up at the stars, bro, and, and see them, bro. Like, mm. or look at what this dunya is. Like, literally feel the earth beneath your feet mm. and, and look at the rocks and the trees and, the, and hear that, the birds and, like, actually realize that this is what you need right now. You just need a few basic necessities and you can strip yourself away from all of this stuff that's being thrown onto you because at the end of the day, if you have true yaqeen, then you will know all of this and more will be available for you in the hereafter. So you're guaranteed mm. it if you can work towards it. Mm. You know, mm. it's about biding your time as yeah. opposed to buying the dunya, as opposed to having your having your cake in this dunya, and that's all you're working towards. And that's mm. basically what it is. People here live for the weekend, bro. People here live for their days off. <laughs> People here live paycheck to paycheck, and uh, and nobody cares about being a debt slave. Nobody cares about being, you know, in the red or or taking or buying something on credit or, or owing people anything or borrowing money or all of these things, bro. Because people just think this is it. The dunya is it. So I don't care how much debt I'm in. I don't care what you know how reckless I live my life. It's my life. I'm gonna live it YOLO kind of thing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is it, bro. Um, 
and even if you don't follow that belief system because you're in it parts of that dust befalls you like you, you get affected by that um no doubt do you know what I mean it's, it's impossible to get, and I'm not that's not isolated to just the UK like I said any any Muslim country has got that and mm. probably in some areas more so you know even in the rural parts of Muslim countries bro even like where I'm from in Tunisia which is quite rural you've got people competing with land and competing with oh, natural. trust me bro <laughs> yeah competing with like building like I remember bro we were the first people I might have mentioned this before we were the first vi- uh, house in the village to, to build a chimney <laughs> you know, mm. in the village, right? Fancy. Bro, next year I come, bro. Everybody had a chimney, bro. Everybody I bet. I chimney. bet they had a chimney that goes higher than your <laughs> chimney as well. Oh yeah, bro. We had one chimney. Some guy built two chimneys, bro. I swear to God. <laughs> <I'm> joking. <laughs> but this is it. Like that exists everywhere. But I think for us as Muslims that grew up in the West, well, and I really do believe this. If we, are, if we make it for the sake of Allah to 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 make these moves for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then we know what we've come from. And we know what we try to avoid. And mm. that's what's the difference between us and them. Like, you, you'll you meet people, and I'm sure you will, bro, even in parts of the UAE that aren't as well off. I'm sure people will be like, why have you come here? <laughs> you're in the UK or you're in, do you know what I mean? Mm. Or like my friend, who he, he was born and raised here in, in the UK, and he moved to Egypt, bro. Mm-hmm. Very rural area in Egypt. Now he's working agriculture and farming in Egypt, bro. <laughs> people say to him, what the flip did you do? Why are you here, bro? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But this this for the reasons i've mentioned that's why he went yeah and it's yeah. different bro it's different yeah and uh, we can say and i say to him bro oh, I, I message him sometimes i'm like oh you ever thinking of coming to the uk like i haven't seen you in ages It'd be nice to see you he's like well, what am i gonna come to the uk for like i'm gonna come there i'm gonna say hello to you for a week or so and that'll be it like what's the point do you mm. know what i mean like mm. he's got nothing for him here mm. and he got away from it here bro he used to live a, a reckless life here before he was practicing a reckless life bro got mm. away from it all alhamdulillah do mm. you know what i mean yeah. So it is what it is. It is mm. what it is. Mad, bro. I feel like this was a a rant episode. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I've got to say, I've got to say. Is two it because you have your digital marketing background? <laughs> what do you mean? I thought maybe because uh, you've done a spot of digital marketing in the past, and I'm saying how um, the society just always wants to sell you something. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> two things, yeah. It's sick. Every time you say Arabic word, it's just mad Tunisian accent. Makes me laugh. <laughs> Number two. What did I say? You said Yaqeen. Oh, I, I can't know. even say it the way you say it. Like, you what, have yaqeen? the proper accent. I don't yeah. know, bro. I've never heard a Tunisian say that, so that just must be. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, but, bro. But, but coronavirus, bro. Oh, bro. Coronavirus. Corona, bro. It's not as bad as people say, right? That's one thing. The news, it's a slow news week, so people just, you know, they need to mm, talk about yeah, something. Yeah. You know, um, it sells papers, bro. Uh, Sheikh Abu Isa, he made a, what's it called, a video about it, actually. And you know, oh, he's yeah, got I, a watched, farm. I watched half of that, yeah. Oh, you did watch it, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. he seemed to think it wasn't a big deal, basically. I mean, you know, a lot of people that get anything are, and die from it are generally poor health anyway. People die daily, by the way, people, do you know that? Like, you know how many people die every day? A lot of people yeah. die every day, bro. Yeah. Um, I think because death isn't necessarily in people's, uh, you know, what's the word, headlights, mm. that when it's sort of, oh, no, it could be me. Well, it could always be you. It yeah, yeah, be yeah. You. you know, it could always be you. You could catch anything. You could catch a flipping malaria or something. You never know, like, anything, bro. So may Allah protect yeah. us anyway. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, um, you know, imagine, yeah, uh, not coronavirus because maybe it's not such a big deal, perhaps, but um, something, uh, something mu- you know more serious. Yeah, if if that hit the city you're in, yeah, and yeah. let's say the the health services, you know, they're like, look, this is a this is a madness. Everyone needs yeah. to stay at home, and make sure it doesn't spread, and this and that. Yeah, yeah. Like at that point, yeah, when you're seeing like you know so many people die from this uh, illness around you. At that point, you're so vulnerable because if the government or the health service or whatever, if they say stay at home, uh, then you, at first you, you'll stay at home, right? You'll be like, okay, yeah. you know, I uh, need to be careful, whatever, yeah? And then, like, weeks pass, and they're like, no, no, just still stay in your home, yeah? Yeah. And then, you know, eventually you might get some people saying, no, no, I'm not going to stay in my home. I'm going to get out, yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah. But then, then you know, f they're forcefully taken off the street, you know. Of course. And it's just like you're willing to give up so many freedoms uh, out of that fear, like it, with the thinking that, you know, for your protection, basically. But yeah, of course, um, that because like that could so easily happen, uh, even if even if the government was not doing it for any negative reason, it genuinely course, was trying to protect you or if there was some kind of uh, plan going on or who knows, like. He just, I don't know, man. I've just been thinking because I listened to that podcast, uh, you know, with those guys who were were, were in Syria and and us uh, in Syria today, yeah. and it just makes I just feel so vulnerable, man. But uh, and then you see, you know, the the Indian Muslims getting attacked. You know, many got of course, killed, bro. Of and course. then and then you see, you know, Turkish soldiers getting killed in Syria, and it's just like, um, like life can end quick. It's like, you know, all this madness could happen. Whatever you're locked in your house, you're quarantined, this and that. Um, the zombie apocalypse, you know, Illuminati 2020, whatever, yeah, <laughs> is going on. Far, but ultimately, right? it's like yeah. you're going to die in it, like you're going to die in, in, in one day or, or in 10 years. And it's just, I don't know if I'm expressing what I'm thinking, you know, clearly. No, I, but know you, just, I know what you mean. And yeah. it's the danger of like selective mourning. It's a danger of, it's the biggest danger of growing up in the West is not being able to sympathize de deeply with people in, so, in such and such lands, far off lands that are going through absolute turmoil um why yeah. is it and I, i'm not saying this in a I'm really really not saying this in a harsh way yeah but the reality is a lot of us felt more um deeply when when the western muslims were persecuted in you know new zealand for example or other yeah. countries that we we felt super deep about that because we could really deeply relate to that yeah. you know because we are living that experience yeah whilst, yeah you've got other countries where we don't we, it doesn't it didn't hit well yeah. at least for me i know it didn't hit me as hard even though it yeah. should have and but I ultimately bro it made me think that uh you can worry about dying from whatever coronavirus yeah, um, yeah, yeah. some kind of uh, apocalyptic kind of event um but then at the same time you you turn on the news and you see uh, either a shooting in a masjid or you see um you oh, know yeah. like sometimes subhanallah yani, muslims killing each other in ramadan mm. uh gang stuff it's basically just like death is like round the corner, like mm. round the corner. And yani, phew, if you can't walk out the door in the morning feeling like you're ready to, to meet Allah, then it's just uh, mad, basically. It's mad. Yeah, I mean, you could put yourself in that situation where like right now, what's stopping anyone barging into your home? And do you understand? Like yeah, events anything, can transpire man. so quickly, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Events can like... The, countries can just yeah. flip and uh, you know overnight yeah, yeah. Um, bro if co like okay let's take the example of the coronavirus right mm. there was um was it ukraine or uh, i remember reading some country like basically an official mucked up by sending something out that he wasn't meant to send and people started looting in the streets bro oh wow and rioting and stuff because yeah, there was yeah, like a, yeah. an official that sent out something about the coronavirus that they didn't mean to do or it was an accident or whatever yeah and, do you know what i mean and that could happen tomorrow. Mm. Like, it could spike, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember, bro, the four cases of coronavirus in the UK when it started were here in the city that I'm in. Wow. So that's okay. where it started, bro, in yeah. the UK, right yeah. where I'm in. And I know the places that, you know, the, the pub that the guy went to yeah. is up the road from my mum's house, like mm. where, I used to, where I grew up. Mm. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, yeah, I almost had it. I'm saying, like, things are close to home for everyone, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're never that far from any sort of... Exactly. So... um so yeah, for me, I, I, I was just thinking, well, people here took it seriously, bro. There was people in the masjid wearing face masks. There's people in the streets wearing face oh, masks. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, um, everywhere. There's, I saw a picture of someone yeah. wearing a gas mask on the tube. Gas um, mask. <laughs> yeah, is what it is, man. And and it's you know it's it's something that kind of um, grounds you because you realize, oh, look at the might and power of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He can send something microscopic to wipe to wipe us out. Let alone, mm. uh, and, and, you know something something virtually invisible mm. can wipe us out mm. um and uh and we, we're just too busy thinking that we've got lives to live mm. and um bills the to s class pay. baby <laughs> s class baby <laughs> <laughs> oh bro i need to wrap this up now bro i know we were going to do questions but um i do need to wrap this up <laughs> 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 how wait how long has it been one hour and uh 24 minutes 20 oh no it's 24 minutes yeah that's what i said 24 oh, oh minutes. 24 minutes bro i want to answer one question yeah because i got a quick answer for it and i feel like the guy needs a quick answer okay uh but it's on curious cat 
It's that long one, bro. Even though the question's long, but the answer, my answer's not long anyway. Okay, shall I, shall I read it out? Please do. Okay, brother, where is it? The brother, brother, brother. Okay. Firstly, apologies for not <laughs> replying to this message. He was probably really more desperate for an answer because it's quite a long one. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll read it out. It's quite long. So bear with me. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. I'm a Muslim convert from Serbia. I found Emin's Sira Masters channel and I started following it among with my enticed podcast as it was offering a lot of interesting knowledge. I'm sorry, but I'm about to write a longer text because I can't find anyone to talk about this. Oh, bro, this is long. Uh, oh, AI for. Okay. I'm just going to skip this a little bit. Uh, my question is in regard to second subject where there was a word about coupling between Muslims. I married a Muslim convert five years ago and we have a three-year-old daughter. My wife was a super gifted marketing and sales expert even back when we met and when she converted. She was showed, she has showed to be ready to make some compromises when her career is concerned, with her career is concerned and started freelancing from home. She has had some part-time jobs which had helped us with an extra income and that was allowing her to dedicate to our daughter and her progress as a new Muslim and we were a happy family despite all the temptations converts face. Recently, she has got a better paying and more challenging job where now she has to work around 10 hours a day. There wouldn't be an issue with that but I started to feel that she began to change towards me. She is more nervous and shows me less affection despite my efforts to maintain our old state. She is not willing to ask to work less hours even though she could and now I found out she has accepted to go to some marine fair overseas to Miami to represent her company and she didn't even ask me as her mahram. I'm starting to fear for the future of our family and most of all for my daughter as her mother is distracting away from some core principles of Islam. She is still praying though, alhamdulillah, but the rest is going downwards. The last resort for me is divorce because I still love her but I don't see this playing out well in the long run. She's often arguing that the follower, that she follows the example of Khadija, who was a merchant and a businesswoman, and sees nothing wrong with that. On the other hand, as I progress in my Islamic knowledge, I'm starting to see the bigger gap between us each day Islam-wise. How can I reconcile her ambition with all the hurdles that the modern day brings in terms of hardships to hold on to the deen? Thank you. May Allah reward you guys. Hmm. Ooh, tough, bro. It's a tough, tough. You know, this one brings it the other way, where it's like, we were talking about death and like it's like death is around the corner but when something like this happens you you kind of you kind of want to fix it if you know what i mean before yeah, death of comes of course so yeah so what would you well, say bro because i kind of <laughs> thought about this a little bit um oh, i don't know if you I thought mean, about it because i know you read it before yeah i mean a while ago yeah, let's be honest to the brother I'll, I'll be honest to the brother myself like it's a very difficult situation um, I can't speak from experience because that's not something I've had to deal with. Um, you know, uh, I can imagine that marrying a revert and a revert being a revert yourself or being anyone that wasn't practicing before, there's going to be temptations that come along with that. Um, and, and, and it happens with even practicing Muslims. Like, they just fall off after marriage. Um, or they fall off, you know, before marriage. They're just people are up and down anyway. Not every Muslim that's practicing stays practicing for all of their life or on whatever level. Uh, people change, people grow. Um, and I think that's the key thing. People grow. And I think if you're growing, like he said, as he progresses in his Islamic knowledge, he has to try and find a way of incorporating his family into that growth. Mm. Um, so it's hard because you could, you, could, you could come across as trying to force things down people's throats you've got to try and find a way of of bringing the family together into that learning um like for example one thing i like to do when I, it was ramadan a few years ago is I, I used to we used to try and watch a lecture every night maybe 30 minutes or 40 minute lecture or something like a series or something every night uh, to just sort of reignite the iman reignite that love for allah yeah you know uh, and especially for women that aren't always going to go to tarawih because it's difficult for them to do so um so and I didn't used to go to every Tarawih because I felt like if I go if I'm away like I'm, I'm at work all day and then I'm in the masjid all night and even though I should be um, I felt like my family are going to miss out on certain elements of, of the Ramadan vibe because maybe maybe Allahu Alam maybe if I'm not there then they're not going to feel as inclined to do certain things they might fall into watching certain you know they've got soap operas and whatever on the, during those times and there's not there's going to be this religious injection into it you know 
Um, so maybe it's hard, but I don't know how to solve the working thing. The working thing is a bit tough, isn't it? It's, it's got her mindset on working in a certain hours or whatever. It's hard. I'm sure, like what you might say, is about actually having a conversation about it, discussing the values and why those values are important to you, what you want for your kids, and it's a very difficult. What do you think? I'm all out of ideas, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's because it's difficult, isn't it? I just while you're talking, I thought of actually one thing which I, I didn't think of before, which is <clears throat> if you can, um, I think you, the, a good person to ask about this is Mufti, um, yeah. but. If you email him the question, yeah, he'll probably reply, but I don't know how long his reply would be. However, if you're able to ask her the question on the live stream, then you might get a nice answer, maybe like a five, ten minute answer just on this. It's quite... Um, so, um, what, it's quite, Yeah, maybe he can rewrite it and try and make it... A little exactly, little try and make it a bit size. shorter so he really gets to it. And I'm sure, you know, the vibe, the, the general vibe is quite easily understood. I think you yeah, can easily yeah. you know, so write that in. That, that's just something I thought of now. But yeah, bro, uh, you know me well. So the, the, the main thing I thought of was, you, you know what you've said in this question? Have you even said that to her? Mm. You know, often that's the case, isn't it? It's like you're worried about something, you have all these thoughts um, in your head, in your heart, and you haven't actually communicated that with yeah. the other person. So uh, I would, if you, you know, it depends how good your communication is exactly, and how yeah. good your link with her is. But if you feel it's not quite there, often you have misunderstandings, often you argue or something like that, then first check out the book, which which we uh, uh, we, we covered in that podcast with um, uh, oh, yeah. Inspire Reads. Um, yeah, bro non-violent communication yeah, yeah because yeah, this yeah. book you don't have to read the whole book but you're going to get the gist of how to phrase things just so that you're very clear on what you think why you think it, and this kind of thing yeah and use that use the technique in that book to just tell her in a matter of fact way how you feel and how you, and what you're thinking yeah don't try and convince her of anything just say um i think this i fear this when you do this it makes me feel like this and, and just be very kind of matter of fact and just put it out there, you know, yeah. and and then because ho my hope is that when you communicate things that way, she will receive the message because she won't be defensive, right? Because you're not trying to convince her to change her mind. You're just being very uh, honest and, and clear about it yeah. that I fear this. I fear that. And yeah, so I think that's uh, essential, you know, um, and then based on her you know response to to that then you can things will uh, go one way or another or you know one way or another basically but uh, the best thing is is to just communicate very clearly how you feel and ultimately you know either you're gonna like uh, actually i don't want to phrase it like there's only two ways this can go right but um I think, yeah, just clearly communicate um, and see what she thinks, you know. Maybe when you're vulnerable with her, she'll start being vulnerable. She might say, oh, yeah, you know, I've been doing all this, but in the back of my head, I've been feeling a bit bad about it. And so, you know, it, things, magical things happen when you're vulnerable and also when you talk to someone and they, they're not in a defensive state. Honestly, yeah. magical things happen. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that you know, sometimes people like change and then they, they they also change back to the way they were. And sometimes it's like three year cycles of change, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, don't be hasty because sometimes things happen and then uh, but think people do change back. But just sometimes it takes one year. It might take three years for them to change. And also like, you know, life is short, but life is long. You know, like if you live quite a long life, then. For example, if you split your life into five-year periods, how many five-year periods are there in your life? Like, there's quite a lot, right, if you live until yeah. 60, 70. So, you know, one one five-period, one five-year period of your life is not the be-all and end-all of, of your whole life, basically. Mm -hmm. That's just a bit of a way of, like, a perspective thing, I suppose. So that's what I was going to say. Pretty simple. Obviously, I don't, yeah, we can't give, like, some very detailed advice, uh, but, if, uh, yeah. If any listeners have advice for the brother, then mm. email it to us and then we'll read it out on the podcast mm. because Inshallah. it might be something a lot of people deal with um, because it's yeah. hard dealing with partners that are no mm. longer on the same page as you or they were yeah. once one way and they're not the other yeah. it's not something I've had experienced mm. I don't think you've experienced mm. it I mean so it's hard mm. to I've seen it I've seen it happen actually out there but it's hard to 
talk about it internally you know yeah definitely so, yeah, be good to get and it's the same people. advice would go for somebody who's looking to get married is be clearly communicate your values and how you see your wife or your husband being yeah um that helps a lot you know okay right. bro. we Michael will baby duties to take care of so. <laughs> final wrap finally wrap things up everyone please thanks for listening to this episode and thanks to, to the brother i don't know if he put his name uh thanks to the brother for asking the question and for listening to the to the podcast um yeah if you, if you have any questions feedback suggestions go to mindheistpodcast.com and you'll find the different ways of contacting us there and yeah thanks bro for the episode uh, i think it was a good one as usual and see you guys uh, next week inshallah سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته